19th century by a German mathematician named Georg Cantor. And his construction, his first, the first construction of infinity was extremely real, extremely surprising. Uh, now, here's an example of how surprising this can be. It's known as Hilbert Hotel. So Hilbert Hotel is a hotel with, a num with rooms, which are numbered, so room number one, two, three, and so on. Three. And the particularity is that this goes to infinity. It's just an infinite hotel. Now imagine a backpacker arriving at the hotel at the end of a long and tiring hiking day. Uh, he sees the hotel is full. So you might be thinking, OK, there's no chance for me to get in the hotel. But the thing is that because this, infinite, this, hotel, this hotel is infinite, even though it's full, we can find a room for him. How do we do that? <coughs> well, well, one way is to have the person in the first room moving to the second room, the, the person in the second room to the third room, the number three and four, and so on. Okay. So everybody basically adds one to the number of its room. And by doing so, everybody who was in the hotel still gets a room in the hotel. And we have freed the first room. So we have found a place for our backpacker. He's going to have the chance to sleep tight. Now that's weird. In a full hotel, you can find room if it's infinite. Now let's go to something even weirder. What happens if I have an infinite number of newcomers? <laughs> Who thinks that we can fit them in the hotel? <laughs> yeah. Who thinks that we can't? <clears throat> well, we can free an infinite number of rooms in this hotel. How do we do that? Well, the, the person in the first room moves to the second, uh, the, the, the person in the second to the fourth, the, the third to the sixth. But well, you double the number of the room of each person. By doing so, while well, everybody still has a room, Everybody who was in the hotel still has a room, but you're also freeing all the odd-numbered rooms, and there's an infinite number of them. So you're freeing an infinite number of rooms. So you can fit all the infinite number of newcomers, right? Well, no. The surprising result by Georg Cantor is that not necessarily if there are as many newcomers here as there are points on the number line. And Kanto showed that you couldn't fit them all in the hotel. Now that was weird. It meant that there was some infinities which were bigger than others. Some infinities didn't fit in other infinities. Uh, you find it weird. You're not the only one. Back then, in the beginning of the 20th century, even the greatest mathematician, namely, well, among which Henri Poincaré, was strongly disturbed by these ideas. And, and they refuted them. Like Henri Poincaré famously said that later generations will see set theory, set theory is the theory that defines these infinities, as a disease one has recovered from. Now all the mathematicians like David Hilbert were thrilled by this idea, they just love it. He said that no one shall expel us from the paradise that Kento has created for us. And this created a huge war among them, a huge war between mathematicians, they were really uh, a huge division among mathematicians between the set theorists and the anti-set theorists. And the set theorists kind of won this one. In particular, David Hilbert went on to becoming one of the most influential mathematicians of the 20th century. In particular, he gave probably what's the most important talk in the whole history of mathematics. It was in 1900 in La Sorbonne in Paris. He challenged the whole mathematical community uh, by stating 23 open problems. And these problems were going to be guiding mathematicians all along the 20th century. And here's the first one. The first of these theorems is known as the continuum hypothesis. So Cantor had proven that the infinite of whole numbers which is the infinite of Hilbert's auto, was strictly smaller than the infinite of real numbers, of, of the number lines. But Cantor couldn't figure out if there was something in between. Is there a set in between? That's the statement of Hilbert's first problem. And this problem is just one of the most mind-blowing results of the whole of mathematics. 
it came in, in two parts. So the first part was uh, provided by Kurt Godot. Uh, yes, him again. Uh, in 1940s, so it took 40 years to come up with this result. Cantor, um, Gödel proved that uh, there was no proof that these sets exist. And read carefully. He said that there was no proof that these sets exist. He didn't prove that the set didn't exist. He proved that there was no way of proving that it did. Now that's, that's already weird. Now the second part came in 1963 by Paul Cohen, so another 23 years later. Paul Cohen showed that there was no proof that the set didn't exist. <laughs> that's weird. So, so does it exist or not? Is there a way to say, well, these guys are saying there's basically no way of saying whether it exists or not. What does it mean? Now, fortunately, at that time, people already knew about Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. At least, Gödel knew about Gödel's first incompleteness theorem, uh, which says that this kind of thing could happen. That in mathematics, there were these theorems which well, there was no proof nor disproof. So what could, could we do about that? Well, what we could do is to assume that the theorem holds that, for instance, that this set exists and do a kind of mathematics. But we could also assume that it didn't exist and do another kind of mathematics. And these two kind of mathematics would be in contradiction with each other. They would be different. And they would be, but they would be both equally as valid as the mathematics we do today. And that's, that's weird. But what that really says is that there's non-unicity of the mathematics we do. Now you might be thinking like, yeah, okay, uh, we, these infinities are very weird. Or, or, you might be like Poincaré and say that these infinities are useless and they are so weird. Should we have them in mathematics? Well, yes, yes, we should, yes. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> uh, and let me show you why. With another theory that uses uh, infinity, this ergodic theory, uh, a very powerful theory. Uh, let me illustrate.